Hey, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. More Studio One tutorials coming at you. I want to talk a little bit about the grid modes within Studio One. Now, this is a little drier topic, right? It's not super exciting, but if you didn't don't have a basic understanding of it, you can be frustrated pretty quickly. So up here at the top of the arrange window, we have some options for how our grid behaves. Now, what I mean by grid is how these lines you see, see these vertical lines? what they do and how how finely they're divided up and then how things behave relative to the grid. So how is this, if I chop up this piece of audio here, how is that going to behave when I move it around? A big portion of that is going to be determined by these settings up here. Now the most important one I think is this one right here, this snap button, which stands for snap to grid. Now one of the keys key commands I use all the time is the letter N to turn snap to grid on and off. It's on when you see it light up blue and it's off when it's gray. This allows me to turn it on and off. So if you're familiar with Pro Tools, they have uh, slip mode and grid mode. Um, it's been so long, I think those are the two main modes. Slip being, it's kind of like when snap to grid is off. I can click and drag this and it will move as fine as I want it to move, right? It doesn't snap to any sort of a grid. If I turn snap to grid on by pressing N, now this is going to snap to my grid, okay? Now, what your grid is and where those lines show up, right now you see a line at bar 29, bar 31. If we zoom in, we'll see more subdivisions of that. Here's bar 29, here's bar 30, and then here are each of the quarter notes within it. But you'll notice this grid, this, this piece of audio is snapping not only to the quarter notes, but also to 16th and 8th notes. That's because we've set up our quantize, basically our grid. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to think about it this way, we're setting up the grid sensitivity in a sense. So how many different divisions are there on our grid? So when we are snapping to grid, when that is engaged, and we set this to something like one one to one or a single bar, watch what happens when we go to drag this piece. It doesn't snap, it doesn't snap until, bam, we come to the next bar, right? So it is literally, if you're doing a lot of loop-based production and you don't want this to be in between, you don't want to snap it anywhere but on the bars, that's an easy way to do it. Now, it will still let you drag it in between. Uh, if you switch to bar, then I don't think it lets you do that. Okay, it does. But you'll, you'll notice the snapping when you see it jump to a spot, it's only going to go whatever you've set this up to be. So I think it defaults to to 16th notes, which I think works for anything I've worked on. Um, and then if we switch it back to adaptive. Then we can see it is snapping to every 16th note as we drag along. So that's helpful if uh, if you're doing a lot of stuff where you record the song to some sort of a click track or metronome and you want to copy and paste, move things around, and keep everything in time. So maybe take a guitar part from the first verse and copy and paste it to the second verse, and you want to make sure it lines up. An easy way to do that is to cut it at a bar, at a downbeat, and then make sure, move that over and line it up to the next downbeat, okay? That's pretty simple and self-explanatory. Now, this next one here, this is a little unique to Studio One a little bit. There's different modes of how the grid and how snapping is going to work. I leave it at adaptive. And a couple different ways you can do it. You can do bar and quantize. As you saw, when it's set to bar, it doesn't matter what this quantize number is. It's only going to snap to bars. So if you're doing a lot of loop-based stuff that's all in at least one bar chunks, then this might be helpful. Uh, otherwise, if you go to quantize, then it's going to snap to whatever you have the quantize amount set to, which for us is 1 16th. Adaptive, to me, seems to be a little bit in between. I'm not exactly sure what all it's doing, but it seems to adapt depending on how far in I'm zoomed. Okay, um, so when I'm zoomed out like this and I drag it, it's it's it doesn't seem like it's snapping quite as to every sixteenth note, um, especially if I zoom way out. Now it seems to be snapping more to half notes or maybe even quarter notes, and if we zoom out even more. Yeah, there's no way that's sixteenth note. That's probably more. That's a bar at a time. If you look at the the little yellow box that shows up. While I'm dragging this, it's jumping over, looks like one bar at a time. Okay, so that's helpful to know because even though our quantize uh, number is set to 16th notes, when we're zoomed out this far, it's just going to drag it by 
by whole bars and snap to those. If we want to get more fine-tuned with it, we don't have to come change this. We can literally just zoom in, and now look, we can even see by looking at this these lines up here, we can see it's got more definition, and now we're snapping to each of those individual 16th notes. So that's a pretty cool function that, that adaptive mode allows for you. The alternative, if you've got it set to quantize, then if we try to click and drag this thing while zoomed out, it's almost not even quantizing. See how it's moving so smoothly? Because it's, it's jumping to every 16th note, and that's not terribly helpful from this view. It's not helping us a whole lot. So by having adaptive mode when we're zoomed out, it's just jumping from bar to bar, and as we zoom in, it'll change. Now, the other thing I've shown this briefly in a previous video uh, is this section here where you talk about your time base. Generally, probably I'd say 80% of the time, I have this set to bars because I'm usually working on songs that were recorded to a click track, and I want to have everything locked to the grid. Um, if for, for no other reason than for, like I said before, if I want to take a part and move it to another section of the song, having it locked to the grid and taking it from the downbeat of one bar to the downbeat of another bar, this makes it very easy. Um, samples, I don't see any reason to do samples. For me, it's, it's between bars and seconds. So if I want to just see how long the song is, or if perhaps it's not, it's a song that wasn't tracked to a click track, or it's something like a podcast or things like that that don't have any sort of tempo related to them, I just need to see the length of the song, or a live recording, things like that, I'll switch it to seconds, and now I can see that this particular song is roughly a little around four minutes long, okay? And then if this is a big live show, I can see, okay, here's 60 minutes of audio. I can see where everything is. So that's somewhat helpful as well. Also, keep in mind, you can see both down here. So whatever, you, you can set one of these to be bars, one of these to be seconds, and then that can be independent of what you set your grid to look at, which is pretty cool. I think in Pro Tools, if you set your grid to bars, I think the the little deal down here in Pro Tools will be set to bars as well, no matter what you do, which is kind of lame. But see here, we can change it out, and that's independent of this control up here. Okay, there's a lot of talk about grids and nerdy stuff like that, but it's helpful nerdy stuff. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.